If you're planning a trip to see the monarch butterflies where they spend their winters in Mexico, you are going to love it. However cool you think it's gonna be, it's gonna be even cooler. That was my experience and I got back about a week and a half ago, I thought I would share some of what I learned and some things that I would do differently or that I would recommend for you. So let's get started. First of all, you're gonna pull up to a big parking lot and you're gonna get out of the car and you're gonna start walking. Uh, you're gonna go through a bunch of uh, vendors and stalls. There's everything you can imagine with a butterfly on it. Tip number one is buy that when you're on the way down. Uh, you can walk through it all, kind of make a note of the places that you think you might find something that you like and then uh, buy it on the way down because you're actually gonna be hiking up about a thousand feet. Uh, you're gonna start a little under 10,000 feet of elevation and get up to between 10 and 11,000 feet. It's gonna take you about an hour to climb, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depending on how fit you are, but you wanna buy that stuff on the way down so you're not carrying it up and then carrying it right back down. But definitely buy some stuff because one of the ways that we help monarchs is to make sure this is a profitable operation and you are supporting monarch conservation by supporting all of this tourism stuff. So you're gonna go up through the stalls, then you're gonna find a really cool kind of grand entrance with a big butterfly painting, and uh, that's where you pay to get in. It's about $4. They don't take credit cards that I know of, so bring pesos. That is trick, uh, tip number two. Uh, bring about $100 worth of pesos should cover it, I would think, maybe 200 if you plan on shopping a lot, but it's only about $4 a person to actually get uh, on your into the preserve. Uh, next stop would be bathrooms. I highly recommend you visit the bathroom before you go on up. I highly recommend you don't drink a lot of coffee or water that morning. And I also highly recommend that you have a very simple dinner the night before and breakfast that morning. You don't want nature's call to be what makes you come down. So use the restrooms. Costs, I think, five pesos, which is like a penny or something, but you will have to pay to use that restroom. Uh, Oh, tip number three, bring your own toilet paper. Uh, bring a little, just a couple of rolls and you'll be happy. Uh, the, your toilet paper is probably much nicer than what they're gonna give you there. Uh, all right, so then you start climbing. First you go up a whole bunch of steps. I cannot imagine how many people and hours it took to build all these concrete steps. You're gonna go up, 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 up these steps. Uh, and that will be the main part of the climb, probably two thirds of the climb. So basic shoes are fine, but don't wear high heels. I saw somebody in high heels, that was not a good choice. Now there are horses available to take you up much of this climb. Um, I can't remember what it costs, I think it's like 10 or 20 bucks, something like that a person. So if you have limited mobility or you just don't feel like climbing, uh, that is available. Another way to support the local economy too. So just know that is a, an option. The last third of that climb is gonna be on a dirt trail. Day hikers are fine. Uh, wear layers as you climb. I was, we were getting there early in the morning and it was like in the 30s and we were shedding layers because we were hiking and building up a lot of heat. Doing good. good. Better be a lot of butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big hike. <laughs> but once you get to the top and you start waiting for the butterflies, you get cold, so you're gonna wanna put those layers back on. So basically, uh, some fingerless gloves would be perfect. Uh, a baseball hat is probably a good idea. Uh, a, a down vest is probably perfect with some you know, long sleeve, kind of, I don't know, river driver shirt or something like that. You might wanna pack a little bit of food, some bars. I would bring a bottle of water. Again, you don't wanna drink a whole bunch of water while you're up there, but you wanna have that uh, for if you get super thirsty. You're gonna follow these kind of trails that are marked off with string, and you're gonna get into this grove that's, uh, they kind of got this marked off. It's about the size of a basketball court. Uh, if you get there at about 10 like we did, you're gonna see butterflies mostly on the trees. It's a very spectacular thing to see, um, but most people wanna see them flying all around. And that starts happening as the day warms up at about noon or so, uh, they really start taking flight. There's still a lot on the trees, so you can see that, but then they're all around, they come into the crowd. Um, 
It is really spectacular. The best way I have to describe this is imagine yourself on a snowy day with big, beautiful flakes coming down. Well, those flakes are butterflies, okay? And they're not just coming down, they're swirling all around you. Uh, it is a cathedral of butterflies, another way I've heard it described. So um, it is definitely spectacular. Bring the best camera you got. You're gonna wanna like, take lots and lots of pictures. A tripod is a good idea to get that camera steady for video. Uh, if you can take high speed video or th that you can slow down and take a slow-mo film on your smartphone, that is gonna be the footage that you're just like, oh, that's what you wanna show your friends. One more camera thing. Uh, drones are forbidden, so don't bring it up. You're not allowed to use that as a foreigner anywhere in Mexico, but especially not in this grove. On the way up, they sell fruit. And if you squish a little fruit, you can use that to attract butterflies. Um, you can put some on a rock, or maybe put some on your hand. I don't know if the guides would be okay with this, but uh, that's one way to attract them if you want them to actually land on you. Uh, speaking of the guides, they only speak Spanish. Uh, if you don't speak Spanish, you won't be able to ask them any questions unless you've got a really good translating thing or something. Um, read about butterflies before you go up so that you know what you want to know and can really appreciate it. Uh, or watch some of the cool videos on YouTube, I got a few, uh, so that you know their life cycle and uh, where they're coming from. There really is uh, nothing else quite like this migration phenomenon. You're there, uh, spend a couple hours. Um, the limiting factor for us was we had to go, we had to go potty. And so I would recommend that you get one of those little portable urinals you can find those on uh, Amazon pretty cheap, and it might just make the difference between having to leave or stay. Uh, and find a subtle place to employ that object, and then you can enjoy those butterflies more. Uh, the bathrooms are about a 700 foot climb down. You're not gonna wanna climb 700 feet back up to see more. I, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be saying, I think I saw enough butterflies. Uh, as you come back down, uh, you're going to be going through lots of stalls. That's the time to do your shopping. Uh, lots of food available, prepackaged food, bottled water, as well as stuff they're making by hand, if you can feel like you can do that. I will say most of us had some issues with the food while we were there, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, again, the real thing is like the night before and that morning, eat simple. Uh, eat something you know is, is going to not leave you feeling bad. Okay, so that's going to do it for me. You guys have a great time in Mexico. You're going to love it. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, give a little thumbs up. Uh, maybe leave a comment. If you got any questions, you can also leave uh, your questions there and I will get back to you. Have a great time. Say hi to the butterflies for me.